So while I'm doing this, and I'm finding my cursor out, I really like to thank Michael and Thomas for inviting me here. It's it's so nice to be here, and this is such a great forum to discuss this topic, and uh, and I'm really been learning a lot uh, yesterday, and I hope to and I know that this will continue today. So, first thing I'm going to do is to is to acknowledge uh, Jean-Luc Dorn, uh, who is scientific officer for EFSA, and he actually gave me his previous slides that I've just been modifying uh, for for this purpose. Uh, so I am an expert for EFSA, I really am at King's College London, uh, but I am chairing the working group that is to develop a uh, harmonised methodology or guidance to uh, for, for mixtures for human risk assessment and ecological risk assessment. Uh, so I'm not an EFSA employee and with that I have to do the caveat that I, my views may not be the same as EFSA's policies and views. So, uh, talking a little bit first about uh, the past activities and, of course, this hundreds of years of winemaking in the region of Parma, uh, uh, which, of course, is chemical mixtures. But since EFSA come there, they've also been working on chemical mixtures in terms of risk assessment. And although several panels have been dealing with risk assessment on an ad hoc basis, it's primarily actually the PPR panel who's been developing uh, developing tools to, to deal with uh, keep, uh, pesticide mixtures. And this has emanated in, in primarily in, in, in four very strong publications, 2008-2019, uh, uh, and then in 2013 they came up with this paper where they are proposing a cumulative assessment group for different pesticides based on their uh, mode of action. And as well as discussing then the relevance of this similar mode of action in, uh, in mixtures risk assessment. And I was asked to say a few words, oh sorry, and also that was for human risk assessment. They've also been uh, publishing on ecological risk assessment and particularly on, on bees and be looking at the development of risk assessment of plant protection products on, on bees exposed to, to uh, mixtures of pesticides. And in that, uh, in that methods paper, they also give a few recommendations, and that it, one of them is to develop uh, dose response measurements, both on lethal endpoint and sublethal endpoints in adults, as well as in larvae. And to that effect, there's now been uh, a, a project been looking, a lab project looking at six compounds, six mixtures for three different species of bees. And also as a recommendation to, in addition, to look at chemical stresses include with other stresses such as diseases. Um, so I was asked to say a few words about EFSA's, uh, EFSA's definition of cumulative assessment groups. And actually Andreas Kortenkamp was in that working group, so he will know all the details and I will undoubtedly do it wrong and he will undoubtedly correct me if I am. Uh, so, um, but in essence, this is what it is. So you're forming group and identifying pesticides that produce similar toxic effects in a similar organ or system. And the idea was originally, at least, to have the same mode of action, but it turns out that the information that you get in the, uh, in the uh, information collected in the dossiers for these pesticides often is not sufficient enough to actually pinpoint that this is exactly what's happening. Uh, it's a... It's a it's a four-stage approach where you start with hazard identification, so identifying specific, specific and unambiguous toxic events that adversely affect an organ or a system, such as the thyroid gland or the uh, nervous system. And then you go on with the hazard characterization where you're more precise about it and you describe the, uh, the adverse effect to specific organs and systems, such as looking at the, an appropriate indicator or the effect which could be a changing in thyroid hormone levels, for example. Uh, you go on with data collection and gather data on these indicators, for example, the change in thyroid hormone, and that point then to a specific toxic effect in that organ or system, so imbalance in the thyroid hormones. And from that you create your, your chem, uh, cumulative assessment group, uh, where you group pesticides that exhibit similar, although not necessarily the same, effect on an organ or system, in this case, the thyroid. Uh, 
So they've done that for, for the thyroid system, they also did it for, for the nervous system. And, uh, and of 68 compounds that were identified as likely be having an action directly on the, uh, on the nervous system, two of them were insufficient to do anything more about. Uh, 64 of them, they de developed subgroups for chronic exposure, where 53 went into affect motor function, uh, 21 sensory function, 24 autonomic function, and then another 19 on neuropathological changes. They also had a look at acute effects, where uh, for 47 of them, where all 45 of them then affected the motor, motor 20 sensory, and 29 autonomic nervous system. So many of these also overlap between these different buckets, if you will. Uh, going from there, uh, EFSA has been working towards developing then a more harmonized and cross-agency or authority uh, guidelines for dealing with mixtures. And it, it, they started by reviewing uh, international frameworks that, that are uh, present at the time in 2013 this was published to look at a risk assessment of, of mixtures. And from that publication a number of recommendations came out, such as we want to have a harmonized terminology between EFSA and, and other agencies and it's you all know it's extremely confusing because every, everyone calls everything essentially by different names and sometimes one thing means something completely different to other people. Uh, and also a harmonized terminology between human risk assessment and ecological risk assessment may not always be all words used for the same thing, but, but at least so that it's uh, analogy between the prin and principles between the termino in the different terminologies and harmonized methodologies and then for human risk assessment to have harmonization between regulated compounds uh, versus contaminants and also between animal health risk assessment and ecological risk assessment and to develop future methods where we also can incorporate other stresses in, addi in addition to uh, chemical stresses. Uh, they stress the optimization of the problem formulation so that we can have a, a uh, identify chemicals of priority, which obviously is something that we've been dealing with a lot in this workshop so far, and you've been dealing with a lot in your programs. And finally, looking at the at the um, problem formulation in terms of integration of exposure hazard-based. Uh, so have a risk-driven, if you will, a problem formulation that could go from either leg of, um, or either arm of the risk assessment. And then see to that we, from that, have also take into uh, account legal considerations, because in some cases you need to go from a hazard base, and in some cases within EFSA's remit you need to go from an exposure base. And on exposure assessment to generate means for cross-agency occurrence data collection for multiple priority chemicals in food samples. And we heard about that from yesterday that, that uh, there's now a collection of, of pesticide data, for example, occurrence data in food. And to develop a case study and training sets comparing deterministic versus probabilistic methods of exposure assessment and develop methods for aggregate exposure assessment, including other stresses. And for hazard assessment to support harmonization and methodologies, uh, and to develop methods for whole mixture approaches, as well as design scientific basis for setting assessment groups, and facilitate data collection for toxicokinetics and toxicodynamics uh, using systematic review. And then finally, on risk characterization and uncertainty analysis, support harmonization of methodologies for, and also to provide guidance for hazard assessment and risk characterization. So, in taking these uh, recommendations into account, EFSA has embarked on a number of different uh, procurements and activities aimed at addressing these points. And I'll mention just a few of them. So, they have, for example, uh, have a procurement dealing with metabolic 
interactions of systemic effects of chemical mixtures for human risk assessment using a systematic review, and that was published last year. And it's, it's not so much methods in this case, it's, it's for these procurements it's more about the data collection that then subsequently can be used by EFSA to, uh, to uh, collate and put into methods and put into, uh, put into um, models. And I have a second one to look at combined toxicity of multiple chemicals and evidence-based approach for animal health and ecological risk assessment, again using systematic review. And this was also published last year. There are two uh, that are ongoing, and one is to look at toxicokinetics and multiple chemicals and creating tools and generate models. Uh, uh, so, an ob first objective to that is to review present models in uh, human and animal and environmental risk assessment in terms of uh, toxicokinetics involvement. And the second is to collect an, uh, physiological and biochemical parameters to develop toxicokinetic tools and anything from simple tools to generic PBPK models. And case studies with 10 relevant compounds to food and feed safety in combining toxicokinetics and toxicokinetics dynamics, and in the final one, looking at models for multiple chemicals, which is then the ultimate goal of this. There is also in the, in the purely environmental arena, uh, development of dynamic energy budget models to, uh, so these are uh, model population dynamics of particular both uh, aquatic and terrestrial systems aiming at developing models then for risk assessment of both single and multiple chemicals. And the first, again, is to review models using systematic reviews. And the second is to collect the information to build de novo models. And the third one is then to develop tools and models for chemical mixtures. And all this will be generated into tools which will be residing in, in uh, our statistical language and published as open sources on the EFSA website available for everyone. So with all that uh, background now, uh, EFSA is finally launching the project to develop a guidance document for harmonized risk assessment, uh, primarily aimed at dealing with, with the uh, risk assessment that EFSA has to deal with, but also obviously for, for people to adopt to other areas and other arenas. And importantly, uh, it is supposed to deal both with human risk assessment and environmental risk assessment and harmonize these as far as possible. Uh, it really launched with the uh, colloquium in Edinburgh in uh, 2014, and then it went off with a uh, working group. And this working group was given a terms of reference by EFSA scientific committee, and that terms of reference uh, was to then to review first available tools for different risk assessment contexts and develop harmonized frameworks for human ec ecological risk assessment of combined exposure to multiple chemicals using tiered approaches. And these tiered approaches should then start from the first scientific principles uh, with problem formulation, hazard identification, characterization, exposure assessment, and risk characterization and uncertainty analysis. And for each of these steps, if possible, tiered approaches for harmonization methodology should be developed where feasible. Uh, and feasibility depending on purpose of the assessment, data availability, resources, and include explicit description and assumptions. And they then should discuss circumstances at which it's not possible to harmonize ecological risk assessment and human risk assessment. And in developing this guidance, the world should start from and build upon uh, existing frameworks in Europe and other parts of the world, so not try to reinvent the wheel in any way. And we should also include case studies where we exemplify how this can be done. And in line with, with the transparency of EFSA, the guidance document before it goes public and final, it will be subject to public consultation. And not only that, the actual the terms of reference itself was, pub was subject to public consultation and was put onto public consultation in October last year. And we now have the uh, results back from that and built, built in the responses to it. 
And the timeline has been, so a year ago, the uh, working group was formed. Uh, the f in June, it had its first meeting. And in October, actually, we launched a public consultation. And in March, this public consultation will be public. And in, um, or the response to the public consultation will be public. And in December, will be two technical reports on tiered approaches for ecological and human risk assessment or combined exposure to multiple multiple chemicals and the draft document is due for June and then in June it will also hopefully be out for public consultation again and then in December 2018 it should be adopted by the scientific committee and the following spring we shall have an international conference or workshop to present the scientific committee guidance document on the topic and with that I thank you all very much for listening.